Hello everyone, we're back with another session of our MTCNA tutorials. Welcome to episode 17, in which we'll be talking about the NAT Masquerade feature in Router OS as another solution to tackle this connection between IP addresses. First, we'll quickly brush up on the use of source NAT in the previous session, then we'll talk about the Masquerade feature and finally discuss how it actually works. So, if you remember, we were trying to ping the address 8888 from both IP addresses set up on the class AP. The source address of 172.31.252.100 was successfully pinging our destination, whereas the address 10.00.254 failed. To fix this issue, we used the source NAT action from the firewall menu and we configured our NAT rule in a way that would translate our disconnected address of 10.00.254 to 172.31.252.100 before sending the ping packet to 8888. By doing so, our ping from 10.00.254 was then successful and we could easily see the natural in action by studying our log records, which was sending packets from 10.00.254 by first applying the natural and translating 10.00.254 to 172.31.252.100 before relaying the packets to the destination of 8888. Then, in order to be able to forward ping packets from the source address of 10001 of the trainee router, we changed the source address of our class AP's NAT rule to 10000/24, which meant covering the entire range of IP addresses between 10000 to 100255. Consequently, we managed to forward ping packets from 10001 on the trainee router to the final destination of 8888 by first translating them into the address 172.31.252.100. And with the address of 10001 now connected, we applied the source NAT action to the address 192.168.1.254 on the trainee router. By translating this address to 10.0.0.1, we ran a successful ping from the former to the destination of 8.8.8.8. SourceNet, however, has a certain shortcoming here. What do you think it is? To find out, let's look at our devices side by side. Right now, we're getting ping responses once we ping the destination of 8.8.8.8 from 192.168.1.254. In the log records of the class AP, you can see the address 10001 is pinging 8888. That's why 10001 has been set on the WLAN1 to class AP interface, and it is currently the preferred source address of the trainee router when pinging 8888. We'll get back to the concept of preferred source addresses in a few minutes. In one scenario, with our ping still running, if I open the details of the address 10001 and change it to 10010, I'll start getting timeout results after several seconds and the ping fails. In another situation, if I have three addresses set on the same WLAN 1 to class AP interface, one of which is 10001, my ping will be successful. However, if this address is disabled manually or otherwise, the ping will time out again after several seconds. In case you're wondering why, despite the failed ping from the trainee router, the log records on the class AP have not changed, the answer is that the class AP is still behaving based on its source NAT rule. It is receiving ping packets from the trainee router and translating the address 10001 to 172.31.252.100 before passing them through. However, once the response from 8888 returns, the address 10001 on the trainee router is either disabled or non-existent, and that is when and why the packets drop. So, going back to SourceNet, as we showed, since we are assigning a single IP address to our SourceNet action, if our interface's addresses change for whatever reason, our NAT rule won't work. Therefore, we use Masquerade which is another available action for our NAT rule and works exactly the same as source NAT. However, you can see that Masquerade does not ask you to input any specific address into which your source address would be translated. 
And as you can see here, the new masquerade action enables us to run the same successful ping from 192, 168, 1, 254. Moreover, there are two ways you can use masquerade. You can determine the source address as a condition of this NAT rule, or you can leave the source address field blank and select your desired out interface for the masquerade. Right now, this masquerade action is set for the WLAN1 to class AP out interface, and it is giving us the same successful ping. Now, let's check out what happens when we define a NAT masquerade. As you can see, we are again running an ongoing ping to 8888 from 192, 168, 1254. The ping looks fine, and the log records of the class AP are showing the translation of 10001 as R2's preferred source address to ping 8888. Now, in the middle of the ongoing ping, we'll change the address 10001 to 10010. The ping, as you can see, does not fail. And what's more, the log records of the class AP show that in order to ping 8888, the new address 100010 is now being translated. Similarly, if we had these three IP addresses on the out interface and 10010 was disabled, the next smallest IP address would immediately take over and the ping would continue. As you can see in the log records of the class AP, the address 10.0.0.50 is now being translated. And if 10.0.0.50 was disabled, 10.0.0.100 would replace it. Therefore, as you see, unlike SourceNAT, the masquerade does not fail when one IP address no longer works. How masquerade works is quite interesting. The special thing about the masquerade action is that it is based on certain algorithms that enable it to look for and use the IP addresses required for network address translations. Basically, the masquerade algorithm works like this. When you run a basic ping to the destination of 8888, the router will first refer to its routing table to detect the default gateway. In our current routing table, the address 8888 is only reachable on our default gateway, which covers the range of 0000 to 255, 255, 255, 255. Then, the router will detect the interface on which the default gateway is reachable, and it will look for the IP address set on that interface. Next, it will refer back to the routing table to find the corresponding network for that IP address. And finally, it will find the preferred source address for that IP address range and use that preferred source address for its ping. Now, as you can see, our preferred source address here is 10001. If I were to change the address 10001 to 10020, the preferred source address would change accordingly. Or, if I had more than one address set up on my out interface, and I disabled the address 100020, the preferred source address would change to the next smallest address it could find. So, when we have a masquerade action in place, any time there is a change in your addresses, the algorithm behind the masquerade immediately checks for the latest preferred source address and maintains your connection by adjusting to these changes. In the end, if you open the command prompt window on your PC and ping the destination of 8888 from the source address of 192.168.1.1, you should be able to receive ping replies. The same goes for a trace route command and you should be able to see the route your packets take to reach 8888. As you saw, by completing all the basic configurations so far, we have managed to establish internet connections for all three devices in our MTCNA lab. In case you have any questions, let us know in the comments section. We will see you in the next episode.